Good day everyone. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to tackle about placing figures in coordinate planes, quadrilateral. So today we're going to continue the lessons on how to place figures in coordinate plane. So today we're going to deal with quadrilaterals. So if you watch the videos on how to place figures in coordinate plane triangles, so you'll know the following rules or guidelines. First is to use the origin as the vertex or corner of the of the shape of the figure. Next, place at least one side of the polygon on an x-axis. Third is keep the figures in the first quadrant if possible. Now, number four, and uh, I think the most important, is to use coordinates that will make the computation as simple as possible. So, I have here four figures on how to place quadrilaterals on the Cartesian planes. I, I want you to think of which, which figure shows the best way that will make the computation or the proof as the simplest. If you choose this one, and I have to say that this doesn't follow the guidance, the guidelines that I refer a while ago. Uh, no vertex or no corners are placed on the origin, and no no side is placed on an axis. This one is not fit as well. This one is not as well because although one one vertex is placed on the origin there is no side that is placed on the axis and this one is the best way is the best way to place this quadrilateral in the cartesian plane now let's discuss what are quadrilaterals when we're talking about quadrilaterals it is a geometric figure that have four sides and four angles so it could be a trapezoid where it has one pair of parallel side and this is it the parallel side here and here or it could be a parallelogram a parallelogram has an opposite sides has opposite side that are equal and parallel so if this is one pair and this has uh, pairs of the sides here are parallel and are equal to each other. So that's the difference between parallelogram and trapezoid. When we're talking of parallelogram, it could be divided into two. The rectangle and the rhombus. A rectangle has uh, four right angles. And a rhombus has uh, four equal sides. So if we combine a triangle and a rhombus and give a figure that has the properties of rectangle and a rhombus, we call that quadrilateral or parallelogram a square. So I hope you know how the, your quadrilateral. So will be there are some quadrilaterals like kite, a key, a kite, and other. So we'll not be using that here, and maybe we'll just skip that and try to do it on your own. So let's start first with a square. Now to place the square on a Cartesian plane, we just need to put one vertex on the on the origin and two sides on the on the axis. Now since all the sides are equal for square uh, and it ha uh, and it is all 90 degree, you can assume that this is a straight line, straight line, straight line, and straight line. Horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical. So if one point is zero comma zero, so this one should have should be a comma zero. I choose a because we don't need to deal with any middle other middle points. There's no point that we need to consider in between zero and a. That's why I used to a. Now since the distance from this point to this point is a, it should be the distance from this point to this point. It should be a as well. So if that's the case, so this will be zero comma a, because to find the distance here we need to know the the difference, the absolute value of the difference of the y coordinates. So that is zero minus a. So this is a as well. So if the coordinates of y here is a, maybe the coordinate of y here is also a. 
Then the coordinate of x here is a. Then the coordinate of x here is also a. So that's why we have this one. Okay, so that's how we place square in a Cartesian plane. Now with rectangle, the thing that we need to consider in a rectangle, it is it, the sides are may not be equal. So let's assume that this rectangle, the the horizontal sides are not equal. So again, let's zero zero comma zero a comma zero, and this one should be zero comma b. It doesn't it doesn't really matter what what variable you put here, as long as this is not equal to a. It could be c, x, y, and for this is b. So since the value of a here, of x here is a, and the value of b here of the value of y here is b, then the coordinates of this mid this point is a comma b. So that's how you place a rectangle on a co coordinate plane. Now a rhombus. Remember, a rhombus slash parallelograms are the same way on how we put it in a Cartesian plane. Now this is kind of tricky. Let's start with the origin 0 comma 0. And now let's place a here. So this is a comma 0. Now remember, the next thing that we need to find the coordinates is this one. Because we will be using the coordinates of this and the coordinates of this to find the coordinates of this one. So in this case, we'll be considering b comma c. Again, it's a, it, it's up to you what variable you're going to use as long as it is not the same with the variable you use here. Now, the value of y here is c. So therefore, and this is an horizontal line, so therefore the value of y here is also c. Now the problem he, here is... Sorry. Now the problem here is what will be the value of a here of a here of x here. Now imagine this. From this point to this point we have the measurement of a. Okay, meaning from this point to this point we have the measurement of a. Now to add this, to add this, this remaining one, we need to find the measurement of this from here because these two is equivalent to each other. So if this is A and this is the measurement from here to here is B, so we'll get the measurement of this point as A plus B. So that's why we have the coordinate of this one. And that's how you place a rhombus or a, quadri or a parallelogram in a Cartesian plane. Now let's try a trapezoid. So in the trapezoid, we need to first thing that we need to find the vertices is the origin that is zero comma zero. Now the next one is this one because we have the it is in line with this, so this will be a comma zero. Again, it's up to you on what variable you're going to choose. For me, I choose a. And then the next one we need to determine is this one is any of this one. So for this one, I will be using dc here. Again, any variable will do. But this one, the value of y coordinates here will depend on the value of y coordinates here. So if I choose c here, therefore the y coordinate here is c. And it doesn't really matter what kind of variable you will put on x coordinate because it doesn't concern this one, this one. So I'll be using bc here. So that's how we place a trapezoid on a Cartesian plane. Okay, at this point, we're going to prove some properties using the placement of a quadrilateral on a Cartesian plane. Today, we, in this part, we're going to prove that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So, play, first, we need, to, we need to place a parallelogram on the Cartesian plane. And how do we do that? Just like this. Doesn't necessarily what kind of parallelogram could be a square, a, rectang a rectangle, or a rhombus, as long as it is a parallelogram. And for this one, I choose a say it's a parallelogram. So let's mark the points. Let's name that a, b, c, and d. So the point a is zero comma zero because it is in the origin. Now since we're dealing with the bisection of a diagonal. This is how I represent it or I illustrate it. So we'll be needing the, the point here. So I'll not be using A as a, a single variable here. I will be using a an even variable here and that will be 2A comma 0. 
2 because we could just divide 2a into 2 to get the x coordinate of this. Since I do the multiple of 2, let's get the, the coordinates of d, and that is 2b, 2c. 2b is from here to here. That is 2b. 2c is from here to here. So it doesn't really sign as long as it's not the same with this. Now let's get the coordinates of c. So that is a to a. That is 2a plus 2b. And same as y coordinates 2c. Again, why I get this 2a plus 2b. This is the coordinate of 2a. This is 2a. The value of x here is 2a. Then I just need to add the from here to here. The distance from here to here that is 2b. So this one plus this one is 2a plus b. Now let's get the let's write the diagonal. Okay. Now in order for us to prove that the each diagonal bisect each other is to prove that they had they share the same midpoint. So let's solve for the midpoint of AC and let's and the midpoint of DB. So let's use the midpoint of AC first. So this is the midpoint formula. AC is is 2a plus 2b plus a. So that's the over 2. That's the f for x-axis. Then 2c plus 0. That is the y-coordinates. So we have... So let's simplify it further. This one divided by 2 is a plus b. 2c divided by 2 is c. So this is the midpoint of that. Next is db. So let's substitute all the given. A plus 2b divided by 2. 0 plus 2c divided by 2. And we'll simplify it. We'll get this one. So as you can see, they share the same midpoint. And if this, they share the same midpoint, therefore, the diagonals of a parallelogram ABCD bisect each other at its midpoint. Okay, let's do another proving. I think this will be our last proving in this in this tutorial. Or maybe another one as well. So prove that the diagonal of the rhombus are perpendicular. So again, let's just use this. We don't deal with midpoints here. That's why we don't use a multiple of two on our on our coordinates. So if we're going to get the get the what they call this the diagonal if it is perpendicular we're going to we're going wait let me see my presentation here okay let's prove that a b oh since it is a rhombus let's Let's prove that a. Uh, let's see that a b is equal to a. So we have this assumption here at first that a b is equal to a. So let's try to to write the equation of a d to write the message. This one shows the distance from a to d. So that that is a distance. So we need to get a, to write an assumption that AB is equivalent to AD. So that's it. That this is this will be our assumption because this is a rhombus. So if we square that, it will we have this this equation. So just remember in mind that this will be that the a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. Uh, this will be this this is the, the assumption that we make because we know that the measure from this one that this one is a. And we, we use the distance formula to measure that this one and this one is equivalent to this one. So if that's the case, we should, we should, and this is a rhombus, we should assume that this equation is correct. Okay, now let's prove that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So we'll be using the slope formula. So let's get the, the diagonals are this one. 
Okay, let's see if this is... So let's start with 0, 0 and A plus B is comma C. So let's substitute the given. So C minus C, C minus 0, then A plus B minus 0, and we'll have this as our slope 1. For our slope 2, we have A comma 0 and B C. So we have this one. So C minus 0 is 0 and B minus A. A and B minus A. So this one will be R. What do you call this? R, R slope of both of the diagonals. Now, let's try to use this assumption. So we have, if we multiply slope 1 and slope 2, this should... We should prove that this is equal to negative 1 so that we could prove that the, the diagonals of the rhombus are perpendicular. So if we multiply them, we'll be getting this as an, our answer. Now let's substitute b squared plus c squared to a squared. We'll be having this equation. So we'll be having this one. Simplify it further, will be this one and m. Slope 1 times slope 2 is equivalent to negative 1. Since this, the product of the two slope of the line is equal to negative 1, it state that there are negative reciprocal of each other. Therefore, the two lines, the two diagonals are, are perpendicular to each other. Okay, at this point... Uh, we're done with placing figures in the coordinate planes. I hope you learned something from this. And we'll be going to prove some geometric properties on our next video. So bye for now and thank you for watching.